All right, Star Wars fans, Chris Gogol in here. Let's get the camera up and running. There we go. <clears throat> Going to be bringing to you live today the Final Four OCS playoff match between Silver Glen and All Stars 97. They're getting set up now. We'll be switching over to that in just a second. Uh, we'll fill some time here looking at the bracket. Profundity already advanced. Uh, with a big win in the game one, and then a concession for game two. Uh, Silver Glen, his path here, uh, he split games with both Spidey Guy and Mr. Yellow, but uh, did enough in each game to win the matches. Uh, All-Stars, I uh, believe, won his first game over Tom. Tom conceded game two because he couldn't win by, didn't believe he could win by enough there, and uh, then was victorious in... Both games against Werfs. Yeah, Werfs conceded there. Silver Glen against Mr. Yellow. Uh, Mr. Yellow conceded mid-game against Silver Glen in game two. Actually, he wasn't going to win that game. So Silver Glen would have won both games uh, against Mr. Yellow. Uh, this was a close game here where they split games, Silver Glen and Spidey Guy. Uh, and let me just point it out. All-Stars beat Tom and then advanced. So we've got the bracket here. We've got Profundity. A KTOD teammate of All Stars waiting in the finals. Uh, I have spoken with both players. All right, well, let me put, phrase that. I spoke with Profundity, and he confirmed that uh, if All Stars should make the finals, instead of just like splitting prizes or whatnot, they will be playing it out. Um, obviously, it's something he knows that, pe that people want to see, and obviously, people have been very excited about the online championship series and the uh, the playoff games as evidenced by the fact that there's quite a few people in the lobby ready and willing to watch this one. And we're up to nine or ten of you watching in the chat here as well. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Ah, I apologize. I thought I muted my mic before I coughed like that. Sorry about that, guys. So we'll just be waiting for the players to... Uh, the game is up. So what has Silver Glen used so far? We've seen him use map and throne room. Throne room and senate. So here's the game we got going on here. I'll give you the big screen. And we'll see what the matchup is going to be. So we're going playing dark, playing map. Not entirely surprised by that. Looked like All Stars is going to be running hidden base. Probably not what Silver Glen was expecting, so that should certainly uh, make things a bit more interesting. And we'll see just what kind of hidden base it is. Is it a hidden base mains platform, or is it a f hidden base flip objective? Probably know that once we see the starting effects here. Um, map typically only runs one or two ships. Silver Glen's got bow and alert, so we'll probably see two ships, uh, the Chimera and the Finalizer. All-Stars going with a new secret base, Virtual, Walkling, and Rebellions are built on hope. Definitely going to tend that this will be more of a space-heavy hidden base deck. Um, and it's going to be really aimed at taking the Finalizer and the Chimera off the table, which is really going to neutralize map's effectiveness um, if they have to pay for their drains on the ground, and if they, um, you know, could possibly have those drains canceled by the Hidden Base objective. Um, hidden Base could certainly lean on uh, the map objective and then potentially get that late game lockout where they just retrieve one card a turn with Luke uh, and stop their opponent from being able to draw up 
until they've retrieved their entire loss pile. That would certainly make it a very one-sided match going into game two, should that scenario happen. Um, usually that leads to like a big win by like 30 or something. Um, but obviously there are ways to play around that, and we'll see uh, how Silver Glen reacts. Welcome everybody in the chat. Looks like we got about 90 of you so far. Thanks guys. Glad to be on streaming with you. Thanks for watching us here on this uh, lovely Sunday afternoon, early evening, late evening, depending on your time zone. I know some of you are giving up your prime football watching time to watch this, including All-Stars. Uh, you may have the Patriots game on in the background. Who knows? So Silver Glenn's going to start six-point activation. He's going to throw down Lieutenant Mataka and use him, or use the sites text here uh, once per turn. If you're first order character here, get to Jakku Battleground. He gets the Jakku system out. He's going to send Phasma to the shield control site, which he pulled with the Star Killer base. This one, if you control with the First Order leader, is a drain plus one location as well. That will also trigger a used pile search from bow to the First Order. And when you once per character deploy Hux, Kylo, Phasma, or Snoke to a battleground, take a card into hand from used pile. So he'll get one of the four cards that were in his used pile. He already used an Imperial Command to take uh, Captain Peavy. So he could have just gotten that command back. Uh, All-Stars used his once-per-game pull with Rebellions are Built on Hope to get Mon Calamari out. Uh, that could certainly help speed up his flip ability uh, because he would now have he, to, he has to put five systems out to flip. He can pull one with his objective. He can pull one with the new secret base. And with Rebellions are Built on Hope, he could possibly flip as early as the end of turn two. or sooner if you happen to get some locations in hand. Silver Glen saves a couple of force, passes the turn, kind of leaving Phasma hung out to dry here, but hidden base, especially this type of space, hidden base, not really known for having too many characters. Uh, more likely to see uh, a Jin or so in a Boosh as undercover spies than you are to see an EPP Obi Qui Gon. Um, certainly, all are possible. And uh, you'd have to imagine Phasma uh, that there are barriers in the map deck, there are trooper assaults in the map deck. So he could certainly get good power with Phasma or just barrier the character to prevent the battle and then come back over the top with several troopers. Um, You'd want to believe that All-Stars not likely to initiate many or leave characters exposed on the ground uh, for battles and really just wants to try to win the space uh, presence first and then does do what he can to mitigate damage from the ground for a while. He uses his objective. He gets Mon Calamari. He uses a new secret base, which cost him two force, and he gets out Kashyyyk. He uses three of force with Wackling, pulls a projection of a Skywalker. So again, just ways to mitigate damage. Could possibly see him pull. There's Mon Calamari, so he's deployed three systems so far. So let me go back up to the top here just for a second and find out he did not reveal a resistance agent so it will be Luke just to see if that comes into play probably not the only place Luke's probably going to be is on a, a ship at a system retrieving for one I would guess uh, <coughs> So All-Star's got three systems out, so he's over halfway to flipping his objective already. Uh, they both have pretty good force activation, activating 13 apiece on turn two. Lots of battlegrounds on the table. And uh, All-Star's does pull battle plan, so it will cost Phasma. would have to pay three to drain for one, which is 
not usually a good value proposition this early in the game. And All Stars will also get his grabber out. Uh, those of you watching in the chat, how do you like this matchup? What do you think? Hit a base slightly favored? Silver Glen went to look for another location with the uh, Starkiller base, I guess looking for the forest. It was not there, so All Stars did get to verify. Um, but now he's going to use Alert My Star Destroyer, and he verified that the finalizer was in there. So that will come down. That cost him only nine using Alert, because Alert makes it minus one for each. And then the finalizer deploys minus four to an episode seven system. So the finalizer only cost eight. Uh, PV deploys minus one to the finalizer plus the other minus one. So he only cost one. So nine force total for this, uh, this finalizer here, which will be forfeit 13, power 13, immune to less than eight currently. I've could get up to less than 10 if it's with a resistance character or resistance starship. Um, and PV can be targeted by Imperial Command, so it wouldn't surprise me to see if that was the card he pulled from his used pile last turn to take the command back into hand, so that way he can prevent any uh, multiple battle destiny shenanigans to help keep his finalizer on the table longer. Um, was certainly curious to see how quickly Silver Glen would go to space. Um, sometimes some players like to feel a little bit more conservative. They like to kind of wait for their opponent to flip before they put ships out so then they can start probing. Um, because you certainly hear, you know, with the deck that only runs two ships, uh, wouldn't want the finalizer to get taken out before the objective even flips. Then you have only the one ship left to, uh, to dig around with. Assuming he can find it and match it up and get it out there, being the, the Chimera is the, the most likely one with Thrawn. Um, and if that were to get taken out before he could find uh, the next system and probe it, then the hit base would be flipped the entire game. It would be canceling two drains a turn, and that would be terrible for Silver Glen. So um, he, he's staying aggressive uh, with Mataka. At the one site, Phasma at the other site. He's got the finalizer out. He flipped his objective. Doesn't do a whole. It stops force retrieval, which is important to keep the Luke uh, retrieval from happening or Wackling or anything like that. If a key card should be lost, but uh, the other stuff with terms of stacking interrupts and whatnot only applies if uh, Kylo's on table. So doesn't quite come into play just yet. Uh, we do see Silver Glen play an Imperial Command and take General Hux into hand. Uh, and it does not get grabbed by All Stars, so he must be saving that grabber uh, for something else that he's more concerned about in this matchup. Um, could be something like Close Call that he's worried about. Um, stopping a key destiny draw from going through that would you know take out a ship or crack its immunity or a weapon destiny if he's playing that type of hidden base. Yeah, the Lightmaker uh, certainly could be canceling all immunity. Could uh, could certainly lead to he looks like he's just going to get his one system and then draws. I guess All Stars was looking for or it was only only had one system in his deck, so he didn't have a second system to get with the new secret base, and then just draws a monster hand. Yeah. Oh, 
there's a stay sharp. So there are some weapons in here somewhere. Uh, during your control phase, fire one of your starship weapons for free. If Han or any gunner is aboard, you can add two to the total, hit targets immediately lost. Or more importantly, if you just fired a weapon in battle, add that weapon's destiny number to your total power. Uh, you can certainly see that happen from time to time. Oh, we've got heavy turbo laser batteries. The ideal things for shooting down uh, Star Destroyers. There are ways to get these out very cheap. Target a capital, target a starship using two force, draw two destiny, subtract one if it's a capital. So you're drawing two destiny and subtracting one from your total, trying to beat the armor of eight. But if you have things like gunners, uh, or possibly using stay sharp in the control phase to add, um, there are other cards as well that you can use to you know, boost your weapon destinies that uh, he could just shoot some stuff down. But he does lose BB-8. Uh, he does lose a turbo laser battery and a barrier, as well as that stay sharp. Uh, and now we're going to see Silverland put some more cards out here. He drops an FN trooper as backup with Phasma, giving her the ability, or Phas giving the ability to draw destiny because Phasma's with another trooper. Uh, Hux comes down aboard the finalizer, which gets him a use pile pull. Not going to be much she's going to find there because it's just the two four she spent for Hux. Um, but I guess he doesn't really have much else he wants to spend this turn. So I guess before he draws, he's just going to deploy the cards he wants and then draw a few and kind of wait and see. Yeah. BB-8 could go and lost, could uh, definitely slow down the retrieval. It would just have to matter in terms of whether or not All-Stars could kick him off two battlegrounds, because he has to occupy two battlegrounds in order to stay flipped. So if he can take the finalizer out and then maybe just pick off you know, this other site with somebody for uh, a turn or two, just enough to flip the objective back, then that would let uh, all stars get some retrieval in if that's his plan uh, we do see silver glenn move the finalizer to mon calamari if you control without a star destroyer four strain minus one here well he's got a star destroyer so that'll be a drain of two uh, if you occupy with the star cruiser opponent star destroyers may not deploy here and your star cruisers deploy minus one here all right, so Star Cruisers, home one, Profundity. Possibly he's playing other stuff like the Independence or the Defiance. Uh, cards you don't really see all that often, but if you need stuff for heavy turbo laser batteries, those are pretty good ships to put them on. Stars has 20 force active and 17 cards in hand. It's not really anything he can't do or can't afford at this point. So Riglin's got 12 in hand and 12 force saved, so he certainly has plenty of options to respond to whatever All Stars does. But you know, typically speaking, map decks are limited in terms of spaceships. He's going to look for a system. He's going to verify his destinies. Silvergun's going to get to verify and get a peek at what's floating around in there. See if there is a turbo laser and a rapid fire or something. Or just see if there's some good destiny cards that might actually have a shot at, uh, at hitting the finalizer. And of course, having a card like Rescue in the Clouds to cancel the close call could be pretty important as well. Uh, he pulls oppressive enforcement, so he must have seen something in there, probably an altar, uh, to cancel strategic reserves that he's concerned about keeping on the table. That prompts him to pull the oppressive. Excuse me.
So we got 15 players watching the game live on Jemp. And about another 11 of you are also in the Twitch chat. That's awesome. Well, two of them are the actual players. So that's cool. So we got most everybody joining us over here on Twitch. So thanks, guys. Always love to have you guys not just watching the game and listening to the to the broadcast, but uh, participating in the chat and, you know, throwing up little things that uh, questions or strategy points or, you know, card choices and comments and helps make the uh, the whole thing more interactive. Yeah, Rapid Fire is a huge card with, uh, with weapons because it deploys the weapon uh, for free from Reserve Deck. Uh, which gets around the four deploy cost of the heavy turbo laser batteries. Uh, I believe they did disable the action timers, so All Stars is taking a little bit here to figure out his uh, strategy. I think that was the first thing they did, right? Yep, action timer was disabled. So no five minute timeout to worry about, just their standard clocks that you can see up here in the top left corner. And there is the aforementioned Defiance. Permanent Pilot provides ability to two. Each of its weapon destiny draws is plus two. Capitals it hits are power minus five. So each of its weapon destiny draws being plus two. Heavy Turbo Laser Battery draws two destiny when targeting. So you're basically shooting at plus four, and you're trying to be an armor of eight on most Star Destroyers. Some of them are even less. Um, in the standard ones are usually a six, uh, finalizers an eight, executors a twelve. There's also the admiral's order taking them with us, which lets you subtract four from the defense value of capital ship. So curious to see the defiance going over here to Jakku. Unless All Stars is just figuring that there's no way that uh, this guy was ever going to get to battle to begin with. With Silver Glenn having that many cards in his hand, uh, we do see the Turbo Laser Battery come out. Uh, it only costs two to shoot. He does add Kin Kian, who is a gunner. Not the virtual, the original. All aboard your starship adds two to each of its weapon destiny draws. So now this thing is shooting at plus four per draw. Uh, making it, uh, I'd have to say it's impossible to miss at that. You're shooting a plus four to each draw. Even if you draw two zeros, you know, you're still, that's still an eight right there. And I can't imagine there's two zeros left in his deck. So, but I guess All Stars wasn't happy with the destinies or the cards that were remaining in his reserve deck. There goes a rescue in the clouds off the top. There goes a Baragwin off the top. He's going to get drained for one. There goes an Antilles maneuver off the top. There's another drain for one. There goes a 3PO off the top. So All Stars already has nine cards in the Lost Pile. Um, and this is certainly the position Silver Glen wanted to put him in. Silver Glen wanted to push the tempo of the game early. That's why he spread out kind of thin, really trying to get uh, force drain damage through, hopefully force All-Stars to top deck something important, or just to you know deplete his life force since uh, his ships would probably be more expensive and would require a large number of force to deploy ships and weapons in battle and pay to shoot and draw multiple destinies, that if he can uh, do some dirty damage and just kind of lean on him, uh, it should limit what All Stars is capable of doing going forward. Um, now the question for Silver Glen is, is where else does he go? Does he put his next ship out? Does he just add an extra character or two to each ground location? And uh, and just you know 
stand firm and force all-stars to change the pace of the game. Oh, we see a laser cannon battery from Silver Glen. This is a pretty good one for shooting down light side capitals. And it does deploy as a react, so with plenty of force saves, that could have been very interesting. Uh, you can pay up to X force to add X to your draw. Usually people pay three, so they're shooting at plus three. Um, he will not be subtracting two because it's only when you target star fighters. Destiny plus X greater than defense value targets hit and opponent loses a force. So basically he'd be spending three shooting at plus three again against an armor of six. So he just needs to draw four and would be able to <clears throat> hit. And Silver Glen does play strategic reserves so he can cancel one drain per turn by using a non-unique stormtrooper which he should have several of in his hand. And things are going to get uncomfortable quickly for All-Stars if he doesn't uh, have something up his sleeve. He finds the second projection, and he opts not to drain this turn because of Strategic being able to cancel it. Oh, he's got a second BB-8. Look at that. <laughs> Just when you think uh, he's lost something important, he gets a second BB-8. Well, most of that stuff is related to him being out of sight, but he does stop this part of the objective unless BB-8 on table, therefore his retrieval is canceled. So now light side can retrieve force. It's a matter of how they intend to do that. Um, we already saw one Baragwin go off the top. Baragwins are great for retrieving weapons. And we'll have to see if All Stars has any uh, additional weapons that he can afford to lose if he gets a Baragwin in play. Or what his next plan of attack is going to be. Yeah, on target is certainly an interesting card that uh, that could come up in this game as well. Uh, not only does it keep the ship from moving, it also prevents the pilots aboard from using their ability to draw a battle destiny, which more often than not leads to the ship not getting destiny and getting uh, completely uh, overrun and beat down. <coughs> and there is Chandrilla now. That makes five systems that Lightside has deployed. So they should be able to flip their objective when they're ready. And there's the Paraguin as well. We see the Baragwin, <coughs> excuse me. Once per turn, top card of your lost pile is a weapon or device or transport vehicle. You can use a force to retrieve it. That's once per turn, so it's your turn and your opponent's turn. They are triple dots, so you can have up to three of them, and he just deployed a second one as well. So he can spend force <coughs> and retrieve multiple, bar multiple devices with the Baragwins. Uh, and then during your control phase, you can exchange a card in hand for a weapon or device in your lost pile. So you can exchange a card to get a weapon or device that's toward the bottom, take it back into hand, then lose that next, then retrieve it with the Baragwin immediately. And he gets Luke Skywalker out as well. Silverglen pulled the secret plan shield to make uh, all stars have to pay for his retrieval. Uh, that is his fourth shield. So he'll need to find another way, a cold feet or something, 
if he wants to play any additional ones. Uh, and with All-Stars only at one battleground here, uh, Coward would prevent him from being able to retrieve any force. Uh, and he does save six. So it would not shock me at all to see that he's losing three cards this turn to see if two of those cards were weapons from a hand that he will then retrieve with these two Barragwins. It's just going to depend on the order in which he wants to do that because he'll only get one action and it has to be the top card. So he'll have to lose something and then a weapon and then he'll get an action and get to retrieve the weapon and then he'll get drained again at the other site for one and he could lose the weapon again from the used file and then retrieve it again. Um, yep, and then he gets drained for one there. And now he can lose the weapon from the used pile that he just retrieved. Which he does. And now he'll use the other Baragwin to now pay to retrieve that same weapon. So he's done a good job here of really mitigating all the damage. shake this uh, lump in my throat. <clears throat> Silver Glen's clock is running. I guess All Stars must have passed his action. Maybe he's waiting to see what Silver Glen does first before retrieving the second weapon. <clears throat> Hopefully there's not a bug in uh, Jemp that's preventing him from retrieving it. So Silver Glen went to look for a site, wasn't there. All-Stars got to verify this deck. Now he's playing the Interrupt to take the Shuttle into hand. Does he have the Shuttle? That would be an interesting addition. We haven't seen... Okay, All-Stars does verify, so there's no Shuttle. I didn't think Silver Glen played the Shuttle in his version. I haven't seen too many people using that these days anymore. go to draw phase. Silver Glen is going to draw a couple cards. And now All-Stars will use the Force with the Baragwin and retrieve the Turbo Laser Battery. And now he can track to it if he wants to and leave it sitting on top of his deck. So that way he would have it available if he wanted to do something like Rapid Fire for it. He would know exactly where it is. Or even if he just wants a weapon to lose, he can top deck it at the start of the next turn and then keep doing the retrieval loop. So he's really only going to be losing uh, one card per turn, which then Luke kicks in and lets him retrieve as well. <coughs> and so we're going to stay in firm at 12 cards. All right, so All-Stars activates everything and is going to control tunnel vision. He's got 18 cards to choose from. Yeah, that is true. Uh, with no cards in Lost Pile, Silver Glen hasn't lost any force yet. He would have been able to retrieve something with firepower, but uh, certainly not there. Um, kind of a preemptive shield pull. It really didn't seem like there was going to be much of a way uh, to cause the force loss, unless he was afraid of like hyper escape or something, that he was pulling that early to cause the force loss. Um, That'd be better. Might be better to have the coward shield instead of that right now. <coughs> All right, 
All-Stars does pay to drain. The drain does get canceled with strategic reserves, predictably. And then we get a Rebel Artillery to make his opponent lose a force. And that will draw the grabber. Used Destiny 7 cards that cause force loss are usually pretty good targets for grabbers. And Solar Glen loses Always Thinking with Your Stomach. Probably not going to come into play this game, so smart card to ditch. All-Stars did not retrieve a card with Luke. He tunnel-visioned and then did not retrieve with Luke. I mean, I can understand not wanting to get a Destiny 1 ship back, but at this point in time, he just kind of needs cards in force. I was kind of surprised he did not, uh, not retrieve that. Uh, Rolling Snakes, we're not sure. Uh, I have seen him use the Forest in some of his builds, whether it's in there currently or not. But he's also been leaving a lot of cards in his Force Pile each turn. So it's certainly possible it could be one of the four or five cards stuck at the bottom that he's just not willing to draw to get to. We haven't seen like a Force Push or anything yet. And here we'll do the Baragwin Turbo Laser Battery Retrieval Loop again. All-Stars gets drained for two. Loses a Virgence in the Force. Another good card to mitigate Force loss. And then the same Turbo Laser Battery, which he will then retrieve again. Uh, Virgence works out really well against big Saber Drains and things like that. You just lost more than two Force to a Drain. Deploy on opponent's location. You lose no more than one Force from Force Drains here. And then at any time, you can put this into your use pile and draw two cards off the top of your reserve deck. It's a nice five immediate effect that you can pull with don't do that again. So if you're facing down a big drain from, you know, Vader and his lightsaber at the back door or the Cloud City uh, downtown plaza or something like that, and you just plop this down there, it forces them to either, you know, if you get it without them knowing about it, now you're only losing one to that drain instead of three. Um, if you take it into hand and they see it coming, then they have to basically not use their lightsaber to enhance the drain, and then they're only draining you for two. So just by having it in hand, you're already saving one force a turn in certain scenarios as well. <coughs> All right. And it looks like we're going to see Silverland draw a bunch of cards. He's finally going to push over the 12 card limit and find some stuff that he wants. Now we're going to see All-Stars yet again. He's going to pay one to retrieve one with Luke this turn. Getting back a nice high destiny five. Interrupt here. He's going to pay to drain at Jakku. So essentially the way All-Stars has set up the game here, he's only losing one card during his opponent's turn to the drains as long as he can keep looping around the a turbo laser battery um, and then that one force that he is losing Luke is retrieving for him so he's effectively not losing any cards he's just spending force to manipulating his piles and things like that um, and Silver Glen is not losing any force because the only drains that he's taking he's canceling with strategic reserves so as long as he has Stormtroopers in hand, he can keep negating those drains for a while. So I think what we're going to see is kind of them just sit here and stare at each other until Silver Glen runs out of Stormtroopers and actually has to start losing uh, force to this drain at Jakku. Here we see All-Stars lose two Turbo Laser Batteries, one from Used and one from Hand, to the Drain of Two. So now he can get a little further in his uh, Retrieval Pile next turn. 
because he'll use the Baragwin here, and then at the start of his opponent, you know, during his turn, he'll still have a Turbo Laser battery, which his Baragwin can then retrieve again, and then Luke can retrieve a different card. So he's effectively going to end up with one more force back and one fewer card in hand. Which he'll do now at the start of his turn before he activates. Oh, you're right, I might have missed him retrieving the control tunnel vision. That was to explain why it's not in his lost pile and the defiance keeps coming up. Good call. I must have missed that one. So now Luke retrieves the defiance. He pays the drain, which draws out another stormtrooper. Uh, map runs anywhere from four to six first order stormtroopers. So I would think that uh, all stars would have to drain four to five times and have them be canceled before uh, he would feel confident that he's drawn out all the troopers. I know Werfs was running six in his U.S. Nationals build, but I think that's the most I've really seen anyone playing. Four, five seems like more like the number that most people have been using. And with no coward out, All Stars isn't really in a position that he needs to do anything differently. As long as he's got a turbo laser battery in his hand, he can just keep playing this little stalemate. This is like watching the World Series, the World Chess Championships. I don't know if any of you guys are paying any attention to that. Uh, it was 11 games. It was 12 games. The first 11 games were all draws, and uh, there were more than a few times where they were kind of just, you know, trading pieces and moving back and forth, and then, like, moving pieces around, and, like, all right, yeah, great, we tie. Let's come back tomorrow and play again, except their games took, like, five hours for them to tie. See, this time All Stars' is extra card is a hit and run. Hit and run's an interesting card because it lets you move away after the weapons phase. Just after the weapons segment, move away any or all. So you don't have to take everybody, you can take some of your ships. Hit cards must still be lost. So if you move all of your cards away and end the battle, the hit ship would then be lost immediately because the battle's over. While these guys are just staring at each other, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the NFL scoreboard and see what's going on there. Late games. Patriots 10 7, about to be halftime. Seattle's up 13 0 over San Francisco. Kansas City's up 19 7 over Oakland. And the Jets are up 16 6 at Tennessee, starting the second half. All right. He's going to deploy the troopers off the strategic reserves just so he can spend some more of this force and then possibly draw into some different cards that are closer to the bottom of his used pile or his uh, pile here. Now, this is a drain of two uh, at Jakku that he's canceling there, rolling uh, BBQ.
moves Bataka and a trooper over. At this point, he's really just trying to spend force and do anything he can. <coughs> Excuse me. Because he wants to get some something that's up near the bottom of his uh, force pile and didn't want to have to draw through 20 cards to get to it. Uh, could possibly be that additional site, that Starkiller base site that we were talking about, that he's been missing. And now Silverglen's going to use his once per game with Hux and go get a trooper. So there's trooper number four. And all stars will continue his stalemate strategy. And continue just to pay three and drain, which draws out trooper number four. Uh, one because of the objective. Yeah, I guess it is limited to one. Because he's not flipped yet. But, I mean, it is drain a two. It's just, he's just capped at only losing one. So, he's canceling it before it gets reduced. Good point. But, All-Stars is in no position that he needs to flip right now because he's not taking any damage. So, I mean, Silverland could just start peeling one card away at a time and and it, all stars would just can sit there and do it 40 times until Silver Glen ran out of stuff to do. It's going to be up to Silver Glen to change the status quo here. And the only way he can do that is either to find another site or to find another ship. Or to find a copy of uh, Cold Feet to... Uh, Get out, come here, you big coward. The oppressive enforcement is the one that I also question. I don't know what he saw when he verified it. I mean, probably the altar V that he was concerned about, but... That certainly would have been a bit of a challenge. to get it and then to cancel strategic reserves. Got to draw pretty, I mean, he's got to draw pretty low. And so far we've seen he's got uh, some pretty, you know, sizable destinies, fours and fives with all the interrupts and whatnot. There's the second site. Okay. So that will start to change the status quo here for Silver Glen. He's just going to move FN over. The other interesting thing, too, is if All-Stars does have a card like an EPP OB or something like that, once he's kind of drawn out a lot of these First Order Troopers, he could then potentially use them. I don't expect that we'll probably see that, but um, we do get at least an additional drain of one here now. So this would require a little bit more uh, potential force loss. Yep. All stars will activate it all once again. Well, that's the point, though, barbecue. I mean, yeah, it'd be great to cancel a higher drain once he flips, but. At the point he was at in the game, if he just starts peeling one card a turn, uh, All-Stars doesn't necessarily need to ever flip. So he can either save the force now or just start peeling cards and uh, and see where things go from there. So projective telepathy. Uh, All-Stars does not seem to have a problem spending force. So Okay, Silverline will not cancel this drain and we'll actually lose a card this time. And he loses.
versus a Mataka. I mean, I suppose it's certainly possible that he didn't remember that Hidden Base limited the drain to one. The All Stars lose the Defiance and the Turbo Laser Battery. Barrow went back the Turbo Laser Battery. Now, All Stars can still do the two Turbo Laser Battery. He can still manipulate things in such a way that he ends up with a Turbo Laser Battery on top of his Lost Pile. That even at the start of his turn, he can then retrieve that and with Luke, so he still won't technically be losing any force. Now he'll just lose it from the used pile again. There's Kylo. Kylo will get a used pile search now. Silverland needs to get a second ship out, you would think, to at least push the pace a little bit more. Kylo and the lightsaber adding an additional one, kind of spreading his damage around a little bit. It certainly could change things, but again, if All Stars gets two Turbo Laser batteries together, he can still do the whole retrieval thing. He just has to do it, you know, on his opponent's turn and his own turn. So I don't know that what Silver Glen has done is enough to change things at this point. All-Stars can continue to just execute. His game plan and just continue to just grind cards away from Silver Glen. There's the protective telepathy again. Stars will just draw again. So now we're looking at two, three, four, five potential points of damage, which are going to continue to just keep getting mitigated by Baragwins and Luke. There goes Dak and a Turbo Laser. Retrieve turbo laser. Drain of one. Lose the turbo laser. Retrieve the turbo laser. 
He's got a drain of 1 with Phasma and a drain of 1 with Fn. Uses the turbo laser again. And loses an extra turbo laser from hand. So now he's got two turbo lasers sitting on top of his lost pile. So at the start of his turn, Baragwen will retrieve both of those. <coughs> and then Luke will retrieve the card underneath it, which was DAC. And effectively, Silver Gwen has still done zero damage net between the, the two turns here. And All Stars will continue to just. mill away one card at a time. Not the most exciting game, but certainly a good lesson in patience and just fundamental strategy, you know, knowing exactly where you're at by All-Stars and knowing that, uh, you know, he doesn't need to force the issue. He doesn't need to go after and attack the finalizer because, you know, he's got 40 minutes on his clock just to sit here and just keep one card a turn, one card a turn. Uh, and he's actually ahead on the timers uh, by Silver Glen. So Silver Glen will run out of cards first. <clears throat> <clears throat> or run out of time first. Certainly a very, very patient strategy. A very slow, methodical approach. Uh, not quite the, the bigger swings we usually see from players these days, where it's all about bigger battles and multiple destinies and things, like the other semifinal game that we saw, where it was overturned three with a you know sixty point beatdown on a space battle. But at this pace, in 31 more turns, Silver Glen will be out of cards. Silverglow's going to try altering the order in which he drains to see if he can trip All-Stars up into making a mistake. Got the control tunnel vision to cancel the drain of two this time. Although that's interesting because this sequence of turns does end up costing all stars one total force in the exchange. Retrieves the turbo laser battery. And now Luke can retrieve the control tunnel vision. Next turn, but he'll have one extra card in his lost pile now.
retrieves the control tunnel vision. Trains for one. Looks like All-Stars is going to try and speed this up a little bit as we get Naboo out now. And we'll see if a second ship shows up there. Nope. Maybe he's just putting out a more tempting target for his opponent. It's curious. Maybe Naboo's his hidden base and he couldn't flip because he didn't have it out yet. Stars will continue to do the Barragwin loop. Turbo laser batteries on top of his lost pile. He'll get one back now. He'll lose it again, and then he'll have two on his turn to retrieve, and then Luke will retrieve the card underneath. And still effectively a net of zero. <clears throat> now, it is obviously expensive to keep doing this, which is what's prevented him from deploying any more ships and weapons and guys elsewhere. just have to wonder whether Silver Glenn doesn't have a second ship yet, or whether he's just waiting for a later opportunity or a better opportunity to play it, but you know, you have to if he's hoping that uh, All-Stars is going to make a mistake somewhere you know, in these repetitions, when you're going through these motions, these mechanics so many times, repeatedly over and over again, um, that you might somehow make a mistake or mess up the timing on something, which might sort of break up the loop. Um, it's not likely. But All-Star seems content to just sit back and just take one card a turn away from Silver Glen and uh, essentially win the game in 30 more turns. And it's going to be up to Silver Glen to do something different about that. He's taking approximately a minute or so per turn, so he certainly has plenty of time on his clock available. face he can exchange a card for the weapon so if he ever gets into himself into a situation where he somehow messes up he can still exchange a card to get the weapon back there's already one further down in his lost pile 
I did lose a heavy turbo laser battery on like turn two. So there's one like three or four cards from the bottom that he could exchange for at some point as well. <coughs> if he needed to get an additional card back. Finally put Walkling out of play to retrieve a card as well. He actually did take some loss this cycle of turns. There's the second control tone of vision. That one came from reserve deck, not the one he retrieved. So, curiously, I guess all stars ran out of turbo laser batteries for a sequence. They're just all in the wrong spot in his deck. And he actually did lose a couple cards that turn. <laughs> so he's going to retrieve two cards with the power grim and the narshot of wind chimes. Maybe he did that way on purpose so we'd have the control tunnel vision right where he wanted it. So he could retrieve further and get another card back out of his hand to get himself more force face down to work with. Finding a way to play more used interrupts. He does have a dark time to add one to make the Destiny a two, so the Narshada does fail. Silver so Glen does burn his dark time there. Still hasn't been grabbed. <clears throat> so I'd have to believe then at this point that All Stars is saving the grabber for the close call. Now he's got 3PO out, so now he can start cycling back cards, which is only going to make it easier for him. Ooh, there's the Gravity Shadow that we saw. Wow. Does he have their tracking us? He does have their tracking us. I was going to say, there's the gravity shadow that we saw uh, Mr. Yellow get decimated with in his top eight matchup. Some people were talking about in the chat earlier. Uh, certainly tried it again here, but uh, it did not come to fruition. Now he's going to go ahead and he's going to flip the objective as well. And now that he's sitting at Naboo, which makes you inclined to believe that Naboo would be his hidden base if he's 
parked in front of it like that. And he's going to force Silver Glen to come to him so he can then shoot Silver Glen down um, and kind of speed this game along a little bit. cancel one of these drains with the objective. So there's a turbo laser battery off the top. So he'll go ahead and pay to retrieve and negate the rest of the drains this turn. Gravity Shadow is certainly a uh, game-changing card, um, and, and uh, I guess that's what All-Stars was kind of waiting around for, making sure he had that they're tracking us to make sure that it did not uh, you know, spoil his day. And now he can go back to his, resume his normal strategy. He is going to try and probe. It was not Mon Calamari. And he's going to he's going to try the other systems first, I guess. He's going to go to Kashyyyk. I think he's going to be disappointed when he puts another card face down and finds out that it is not Kashyyyk. Now it's going to cost Silver Glen some force. He's got to spend force to draw cards. It will certainly help him a little bit because he, if he's if there's cards on the bottom of his force pile that he's wanted for a while, uh, this will help him get to a couple of them easier without having to draw through uh, cards that he already knows what and where they are. Drana 2 at Nebu goes through. Which gets Phasma and a barrier. More cards out of Silver Glen's hand. And Silver Glen will attempt to probe Kashyyyk. Everything All Stars has done makes you want to believe that Naboo is his hidden base. Uh, 
but that seems like a misdirection to me. I'm going to go out on a limb and say Chandrilla is the hidden base, or Coralag. No, I'm going with Coralag. Yeah, I'm going with Coralag. I'm pretty good at smelling hidden bases, and I'm going with Coralag. That is certainly uh, a possibility. Silver uh, Crazy Runner guy. Uh, we've seen the Stay Sharp before, and that obviously if Finalizer does move over to Naboo, it's very likely to get shot down before uh, anything transpires. So I'll be very curious to see if Silver Glen moves around Naboo and just takes three more turns and probes everything else first just to make sure that he eliminates the possibility that it's Naboo, that it's not Naboo. So the space drain of two gets canceled, and now here come the smaller drains of one. Turbo laser battery, retrieve. It's kind of one of these weird counterintuitive things, too, because, you know, obviously Silver Glen wants to keep doing these things and keep the pressure on and keep making all-star spend force and things like that. But he's also running his own clock every time he force drains and just lets all-stars then retrieve the card that he just lost. Um, he's kind of running his own clock down too. So at some point in time, that might be a consideration that he might have to just, you know, once the first turbo laser battery hits the loss pile, just know that he's just going to retrieve it and cycle it back and forth. Um, obviously he wants to keep spending the force so he can't do other things with that force but at some point in time you know the clock may become an issue He's going to Naboo. Are we going to see a clutch sense? And he's going to stack an interrupt. He's going to stack a force push, which I would assume he's then going to use. Yep. And he's going to go hunting for something. There is no force field for starships, and there's no way to subtract. If he has a sense in his deck to cancel to stay sharp, this could be pretty huge. And if he tracked around a four, like he drew for the Gravity Shadow Destiny, then Kylo could cancel the sense, or uh, successfully draw for the sense if he's got one. But otherwise, you know, stay sharp could be. Uh, could be pretty brutal. Oh, and All Stars is going to play the on target. For those of you not familiar with this broken card, if you have a piloted capital starship armed with a starship weapon, use two force to target an opponent's starship present. Until end of your next turn, target cannot move, and its pilots may not apply their ability towards drawing battle destiny. So until the end of this turn, because he did it on his opponent's turn, Finalizer can't move, and its opponents can't draw Battle Destiny. And now here's the Stay Sharp, where he will fire the heavy turbo laser battery. And his Weapon Destiny draws are plus four, plus two from the Defiance, uh, and plus two from Kin Kian, I believe we said earlier. Yeah. There's the close call. He subtracts three. 
All Stars plays a second copy of Stay Sharp. Nope. Oh, no, it's the original copy. You just have to declare that you're using uh, the gunner to add two, I guess. But it doesn't really matter because the second destiny was more than enough. Drawing the Nar shot of wind chimes. And down goes the finalizer. Just made a tiny mistake there. He retrieved with Luke to get the laser to get that battery back, not a Baragwin. He could have retrieved one more card. There's a drain of two and a Naboo. So this was the situation that All Stars was waiting on, obviously to get his little block situation. Now he can cancel one drain per turn. And then he's gonna do the Baragwin loop for the other force loss, and then he's going to retrieve. In the meantime, Silverglund's going to have to pay for all these drains. And it also let All-Stars put a couple of used interrupts back in his deck as well. So they place their tracking us to activate one. See if he 3 pos a card now. Yep. And now the question will remain, does Silver Glen have a second ship? Did he get bluffed? Nope, Silver Glen's just going to start drawing. But he's not going to be able to draw up completely because he's got to spend one force each time, unless he has a way to make himself lose a force. has any type of card that requires a force loss to play it. He could certainly do that if he draws himself all the way down to one and then plays a card. To make himself lose force and then he could just top deck that last card. That would end the game before all stars can retrieve everything. <clears throat> and Silverland just realized that he's not going to be able to draw up, so he's going to have to try and find another way out of this scenario. Otherwise, All Stars is just going to continue to 3PO's cards back and Retrieve everything. Unless Silverglen fi magically finds a copy of Cold Feet.
there's the tracking us, which with the card he'll continue to keep looping around to activate. see if Silver Glen has any answers, if he can find a way to force himself to lose a card somehow. But it doesn't look like that's going to be possible. Looks like Jim might have just messed up there, though. Hang on a second. So he had seven force active. He paid one, drew one. He paid one, drew one. He paid one, drew one. It let him pay the last force, even though he no longer had a card to draw. I don't know that that's the way that's supposed to work. Or at least it's never the way it's ever been played in real life. Maybe that is the way it's supposed to work. And but I know we've seen Jump do some strange things like that with Luke Skywalker, Rebel Scout, and until he's maneuver, where you have to pay one to do the action first. But it's like if you don't have the force underneath it to actually complete the action, you still get stuck paying the force. But that's interesting. <coughs> Does not look like Silver Glen has a way out of this. So what's going to happen now is obviously All Stars is just going to continue to pay one to retrieve one and pass this turn. Silver Glen has gotten himself all the way down to just one card left. All-Stars is going to continue to retrieve a force and put a force back. Until he gets himself all the way to 23 and 14 to 37. So I believe that was the number Barbecue was spewing in chat for quite a while. It's 37, yep. So it looks like this will be a win by 37, and I wonder if that will mean we'll have a game two or not. Stars has a different card he can play. Maybe he's just trying to speed this up a little bit. Thank you everyone for uh, tuning in and watching us.
this game today. I know it wasn't the most exciting game to watch, but it certainly is uh, some very valuable lessons here in technique and board management. Uh, certainly cautionary tales about you know using all your shield pulls, especially when you uh, don't have access to additional ones through cards like Cold Feet. Or turn it off, or Onyx 2, or the Min Coon, I think it is. Kyrkanos, one of those guys. One of those Royal Guards gets you a, uh, I think it's Min Coon, gets you a shield pull. like we're stuck on Silver Glen's action in All-Stars battle phase. <laughs> I wonder if he just walked away and he's just going to let his 20-minute timer run out. They, just, they agreed to disable action timers, so he won't time out after 5 minutes of not doing anything. Uh, he'd have to make All-Stars sit there for 20 minutes. He could also just agree to concede the game and lose by 37 at this point, too. I mean... There are easier ways to do that. You could just type a message in chat and be like, okay, so you retrieve everything. So you get 11 more cards back, which is you by 37. Good game. And then just end it. We'll see. Uh, you know, maybe you just had to go to the bathroom or something. NFL scores. Hey, the Jets are still winning in Tennessee. Look at that go. KC's up 10 over Oakland. And they're about to score again. Seattle's beating up on San Francisco. Where's the Patriots score? That's 10-10 still. Okay. Stars is going to put it out in the chat. It's going to be 37. <clears throat> and we'll see if Silver Glen accepts or if Silver Glen is AFK.
You're certainly welcome, man. I hope you guys uh thank you guys all for tuning in and watching this game with us. Again, I know it wasn't the most exciting matchup. You know, certainly a very technical and strategic game played by all stars, very methodical. And if he had a strategy going in, he stuck to it. Uh, and he didn't screw it up anywhere along the way, uh, which is certainly, you know, a hallmark of a top caliber player, a Hall of Famer like he is. There are certainly uh, plenty of options and mechanics and repetitions along the way that, uh, you know, the tiniest little hiccup can throw the whole thing out of balance and uh, give your opponent an opportunity, and he did not do that. He was patient, and uh, as a result, He's going to pull off a very successful lockout. I also don't know Silver Glenn being a fairly newer player to the game, very experienced, but uh, just wonder whether or not he's run into this before uh, in the European market. Oh, and there we go. Silver Glenn's going to go ahead and concede. All Stars plus 37. And we will find out about game two if game two is going to happen or not. Otherwise, we'll uh, be advancing to the finals. We get out of full screen mode. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stop streaming now because, well, it's dinner time and I'm hungry. Uh, but again, thank you guys all for watching. Be sure and check the forums to find out if Game 2 will be played uh, and when, and obviously we'll stream that. Otherwise, we'll be moving on to the finals, which would be All-Stars vs. Profundity, and we'll find out when they're going to play. I would guess those games are going to be, if it is All-Stars vs. Profundity, those games are probably going to be weekday afternoons because they're both teachers, and they'll probably both play potentially after school, um, depending on sports and activities and practices and those kinds of things. Um, but uh, thank you guys for watching, and have a great rest of your weekend.